again. This is uh, English Concertina for beginners. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what number this one is at the moment because I haven't decided. It's going to be a little bit different to, to the normal uh, videos in the series. Today I'd like to uh, give you a chance to have a look at what happens when we take the end off the concertina. Okay, I'm lucky enough to uh, have a concertina uh, repairman and uh, who, who uh, I'm able to visit and so I went along to him and asked him to take the end off an English concertina and to show us inside. So let's go and have a look at what we've got, shall we? Okay, so we've eased the screws now, we're going to take the end off there. So, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so there you can see the reed pan, you can see all the reeds, the hole in the middle helps you remove the reed pan, and you can see the reeds are different sizes. Okay, so now we're going to remove the reed pan from the end of the bellows. There we go. And you can see the other side. We'll have a closer look at that in a second. And there you can see the end of the bellows. I can't zoom in close enough, but uh, people who've worked on concertinas often stamp their, the engineer's name on the inside. And we can see that on this example. So here you can see some of the longer steel reeds, um, the, the, the whitish oval pieces either side of the reeds are the valves that allow air past on the push or the pull. OK, now we're going to slide one of the reeds out on one of the reed plates. That's coming out now, look. There it goes. OK, so we'll have a closer look at that if we can. Here we can see a, a reed frame and we can see the reed clearly clamped down by the two screws. And here we can see the tissue paper thin tolerance between the sides of the reed and the reed frame. OK now we've, slidden the, we've slid the reed on the reed pan into a little jig here. And we're going to show you how the... Uh <coughs> you see a pair of bellows falling there. OK, so when we let go of the bellows beneath, you'll hear the reed sound. Here we can see the reed in the reed frame. This is on the workbench ready for tuning. You can see a slight curve in the reed. It's a parabolic curve and has to be set up professionally. And that's a little out of focus, but I hope you can see the curve in the reed. Here we see again the two screws clamping down the reed to the frame. Here's a close-up shot showing the reeds in the reed pan. And uh, you can clearly see the valves there. And the two little steel pins you can see sticking out prevent the valve from opening too far. OK, now you can see a set of reeds in the pan there. And then we're going to turn the pan over now. And you'll see that there are reeds on the other side too. That's because there are two reeds to make each note that you play, but only one is being used at a time, one on the push, one on the pull. And here we've got a sideways view, and I hope you can see the reeds on the top with the, uh, the chambers and the reeds below. The same chamber provides the air for each reed, and there's a little uh, leather flap of a valve, the oval valve, that opens or closes, depends on whether you're pushing or pulling the bellows. OK, now we've had a look at the reed pan. What we're going to have a look now is the action, the thing that makes things work. But to get into that, although we've taken the end off, we now have to take the end apart. And there are a couple of screws, one in the centre of the thumb strap, one in the centre of the little finger rest. We've taken those out, and now we're going to separate the two halves. There we go. Let's have a closer look at that. So here you can see all the buttons. And you can see how each button is connected to a lever, and on the end of each lever is a little white circular pad. The pad's made up of three or four different materials, and they're all made by hand. The springs are made by hand, the levers are made by hand, the buttons are made by hand. So you can begin to see how many, probably into the thousands of parts, all go into the setup of a concertina. That's just the action from one end. You've got a similar set at the other. Let's have a look at a few close-up photographs. OK, here we see how the buttons and the levers are connected to each other. 
This is a nice close-up of the pads. You can see the different layers that go to make up the pads and the glob of glue that holds the pad to the end of the lever. That's a beautiful photo of the, uh, the felt that quietens everything down. This post with a hole in the top, that's what the screws go into that go through the thumb strap and the finger rest. And there you see the underside of the, the action uh, plate. You can see all the holes, the pads we've just looked at are there. So we're going to push a button, you can see a pad lifting off the hole there, look. That's nice and clear. That allows air through that hole. And when the air comes through the hole we just saw, it comes into one of these chambers and passes over the reed. Okay, this photograph shows a common problem. You can see the valves are lifting up and they're not closing and sealing the hole. This causes problems when you're trying to play. Here we're looking at a six-fold set of bellows. Uh, it's from an aola, it's eight-sided as you can see, and you can see them opening and closing. Um, this is made up of uh, pieces of um, cards cut into uh, trapezoids, I suppose they are really. But again, it's all made by hand, and uh, there's a number of days' work in um, getting a set of bellows together. Obviously glues have to dry, all the gussets have to be put into position to seal the corners between the various components. Um, six fold, five fold, seven fold bellows all favoured by different players. And that's your set of bellows and uh, it's why I don't uh, play with the bellows resting on my knee because to replace a set of bellows is expensive. Here we see chamois leather being used to make an airtight seal. Here we see how small amounts of metal are taken from the tip of the reed to raise the pitch and if we take metal from the base of the reed then the pitch of the reed is lowered. See how the reed is supported there in the frame. Don't try that at home. And to finish off I thought you might like to see one or two concertinas. Um, this is a, a, a lovely machine. And now we're moving on to a, a tenor machine. Mine's a tenor treble. This is a tenor and uh, it has a lower range. Uh, a tortoiseshell ends on that one if I remember rightly. Um, the next one we're going down in pitch now. And these instruments are interesting. They only play on the push, so you'll see the player there quickly pull the ends apart to get some air in. And in just a moment we'll have a look underside and I think we'll get a chance to have a look at the, uh, the valves. Yeah, there they are. There are the valves underneath that allow a fast inrush of air to fill those bellows. The reason it works like that is because the instrument would just be too heavy to have a reed for the pull and a reed for the push. Okay, and that's the big granddaddy of them all. You can have a full, full orchestra of concertinas if you want. Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I certainly, certainly find it fascinating looking inside and uh, you begin to get some idea, I hope, of uh, the complexity inside. Although, you know, the theory is quite simple, there's a lot of it, a, a lot of components in there. And all of those components have to be working well together with each other, otherwise you get a box that doesn't play very smoothly. Um, I think there's probably around 25 individual items connected with the action, the button action, and the reed itself. Um, and you, you know, if you've got a 48 key concertina, you're getting on for a lot of items, and that's without any of the woodwork or the patterns inside. So, hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you next time. Bye.